All right. So just as always, we're going to start by setting up a new R script, which I'm going to save in my folder that has the data for today's exercise. I am going to call it, oh, I'm just going to call it AutoCore. And then let's set our working directory to the source, source file location so it knows how to find our data. How we're going to start our randomization process is by first doing something called set seed. Right now, all of us, if we pulled, what the set seed does is it helps fix a one of these versions or iterations of number draws so that the first 10 numbers that I draw and the first 10 numbers that you draw now, if we have the same seed that is set, they'll be the same. I'm going to set my seed to 20. Please set yours to 22, to 20 as well, uh, so that we're all looking at the same graphs that get generated um, from what we're about to do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a white noise to store our information in. And now what we're going to do is create a time series object. Instead of passing this time series object a data frame, we're going to pass it a certain number of draws from a, a random distribution. And so we're going to tell it to do that by giving it the R norm uh, function and saying, I want 273 draws from this normal distribution, the R norm. And I want the mean of this distribution to be 0.18. So two things. One, when we did the example on the whiteboard, we had a mean of zero for our distribution. You can shift that to whatever mean you want. And in this case, I've chosen a mean of 0 0.18 because that's the mean value from the NDVI data set. And when we're comparing the NDVI data set to this randomly generated time series, I wanted everything to be very comparable. So the NDVI data set has a mean of 0 0.18 and 273 time points. And so I'm creating this random time series that also has 273 time points uh, with a mean of 0 0.18. Let's run both of these lines of code now. Set our seed, our create our white noise time series. And now let's plot this. And give it white noise main equals, though it'll, oops, let me put some quotes around there. And then I'm going to put the mean on there so that you can see how white noise data is bouncing around the mean. And, and then we'll compare that with uh, the actual NDVI data is bouncing around its mean. Put a horizontal line of 0 0.18 on there. All right, let's run those lines of code. And there's our graph and I will increase that a little bit so it's easier for you to see. Perfect. And so here's what a white noise distribution looks like. As we talked through on the whiteboard, anytime it has a big excursion from the mean, it tends to have a big excursion back towards the mean. So for example, here's a big peak, and then it comes back, and then it goes under, and then it comes back. And so a white noise will tend to always have this kind of jagged look as it bounces back and forth across a mean. What I'd like you to do now is import the data, turn it into a time series object, and, uh, and then we'll get back together. And in the written instructions after this video, I'll have details about what to, the name to call the data that you're at when you import it, and what to call your time series object, so that you're not always having to translate between what you decided to do versus what I did as we go through the videos. See you in a few minutes.